Thank you, uh, choir. Let us really lift up our hearts as we begin our study this morning. All the way, our Savior leads us. At the outset, I'd like to thank the Lord for giving me this privilege of leading our study this morning. You know, standing here is not easy. And preparing and uh, studying, doing research is not easy. Especially for one who has no theology background and uh, one who belongs now to the senior group. <laughs> you know, my study has uh, cost me some many, many hours and late nights. And my wife sometimes would catch me nodding and sleeping before my uh, computer. <laughs> and sometimes I would forget some names and events that I would like to include. And I would ask her to for help. And my wife would jokingly say, I am darling, go my Alzheimer's na. But, uh, you know, I haven't answered that. Yes, I may forget once in a while, but it's not Alzheimer's. It's only part Alzheimer's. Hindi pa all. It's only part Alzheimer's. But, you know, friends, uh, don't underestimate us elderly and those of us who belong to the senior citizen group. You know, we didn't have internet, we didn't have Google, we didn't have iPads or iPhones or these modern gadgets then during our time. But we did well, didn't we? We did well. If you are a baby boomer like me, <laughs> those of you who are born in the years 1946 to 1964, are there, are there other baby boomers around here? 1946 to 1964. All right, I'm sure there are a number of us here. All right. And I say congratulations because it is said that baby boomers are the wealthiest the healthiest and the most active generation in history. Oh, let's congratulate ourselves for that, those of you who are baby boomers. You know. you know, so I would say uh, for those of you who belong to the Generation X and Generation Y, or those who belong to, uh, those who belong to the millennials, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But there's no malice intended here. No malice intended. So, uh, good morning and happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. Sabbath, everyone. Are you happy to be here today? I'm, um, I am, but uh, though with a little hesitation, you know, but I'm happy to be here uh, studying on a very important topic, the power of God's word. Power in the word of God. This was assigned to me by our church pastor before he left for Ayas. And it's not an easy topic. But anyway, the Lord will be with us as we study together this morning. So I'd like to invite you to join us, join me as we pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us the gift of faith and the Holy Bible, as we seek your face and study your word this morning, our prayers that you will illumine our hearts with your truth. Through the power of your word, the abundance of your grace, and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, transform us into your likeness. And may our worship and study this morning Give honor and glory to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Those of us who were here last Sabbath and heard the message 
uh, Attorney Valencia, we de deeply appreciate his uh, clear and incisive presentation on how to understand the Bible, and together with it, some tips on a, a, what we call a profitable study of Scripture. Today, we will continue our focus on the Word of God in keeping with our Worldwide Church theme for this year, 2018, which is faithfulness to His Word. Let us go to our uh, key text for today. The key text for today. Uh, can we have that, please? Our key text for the Hebrews, chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. That was read earlier by Brother Gideon, which says, For the word of God is quick. King James Version here. The word of God is quick. Another word for quick is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. This is not read very often, but I realized that in my study, there's, the Bible has so much to say about God's power in His Word. We will not talk even about His creative power. We will not even touch on His redemptive power. We will not even talk about other things except on the power of God and its relationship to Christian living. The Word of God, when we say the Word of God, we're talking about both the spoken Word and the written Word. We will delve into what the Bible say about the power of God and how we who are saints, who, are, who have been saved, can tap into the power, supernatural power. Right? This is found in the Bible. So, let's go. Number one, I have, I have prepared nine important points here that I'd like to share with you. Number one, it says there, the word of God can be trusted. The Word of God can be I would like to start with this foundation. The Word of God can be trusted. Because without trust, we will not waste our time reading our Bibles. Right? We will not spend time learning and making it part of our Christian living. The Word of God can be trusted because it is God-inspired. It came from God Himself through the Holy Spirit who moved the authors to write. This uh, we find in 2 Peter chapter 1.21. If the Bible or Scripture did not come by the will or impulse of any man, but it came straight from God Himself. So we say that the Bible inspired the Bible can be trusted, and even philosophy or science or man's wisdom fail in comparison with the Word of God. And the Bible, friends, spoken in faith has power. The Word of God has power. Do you believe that? <laughs> Have you experienced the working of the power in your life? The spoken in faith, the Word of God has power because faith and the Word of God, yes, they go together. They go together. Jesus himself, who is the Word, declared, says, all power 
in heaven and in earth is given unto me. So friends, no question about it. We can trust the word of God. We can go confidently into our Bibles and tap into it, its supernatural source of power. Number one, the word of God can be trusted. Number two, the second one, the word of God has power to convict. The word of God has power to convict. Right. Our memory verse says, Hebrews 4, 12 and 13, it is alive, it is living, it is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, and it cuts, it pierces, see there, down into what? Our very being, our body, including what? Our bones, our marrow, and reveals to ourselves our true condition. True condition. It lays open our spiritual standing before the Lord and exposes our thoughts in the intentions of our hearts. Yes, the Word of God is able to point out sin. In fact, I believe that without the power of conviction, we will not be here today. We will not be here today because we believe that the Word of God is one instrument the Lord uses to bring us back to Him. The, the, the Word of God in the Clear Word Bible, it says there, it lets us see our own motives and it helps us change. It helps us change. So, Lord, we thank you because your power, the power of, of your Word is able to convict us, lead us into an awareness of sin in our lives. Number three, the third one, the Word of God has power to transform, to transform. First Peter 1.23, it says there that being born again, how? We are being born again by the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Not through our own efforts, or any mysterious power from somewhere, but simply through the Word of God. Help our memory verse again, which is, uh, provides us help here. It helps us change our motives, help us change our attitudes, our way of living. It helps us overcome our critical spirit, our self-sufficiency, our selfishness, our pride, right? things that should not be seen anymore in people who are being saved, brothers and sisters. Romans 12, 2 also says, uh, very popular verse, if any of us can mercy you, be not what? Be not conformed to this world, but let what God transform us into his likeness. Forget the world and what it can offer. Um, I remember in my experience when I was still working uh, in the corporate world and many times our, my bosses would ask me we have something for you to do. There's a big assignment here for you. Or sometimes you would say, you are scheduled for a promotion, but the problem is your Sabbath. <laughs> Time and again, you know, they would bring this up. The problem with you is your Sabbath. Is, it? is there a way that you could, you know, talk to your priest or to your pastor and grant you, what do you call this one, uh, uh, excuse or something, you know? All right. 
so that, you know, you have no problem with your Sabbath. But then again, friends, no, we, Paul says, be not conformed to this world. Let us be transformed by the renewing of our minds, by the renewing of our minds, our attitudes, the way we look at things in life. Number four, number four, the Word of God has power to avert or prevent sin. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Very popular verse, Psalm 119, verse 11. Oh yes, God's word is a powerful antidote as we battle against sin. The power of God's word, we need that. As I said, it's a powerful antidote. Panguntra. <laughs> Panlaban against sin as we battle against what, the power of darkness. And friends, this should remind us that we need to study the Bible, make it a part of our lives. We need to keep, we need to, to hide God's word in our hearts. And also, the Bible says, let us put on the whole armor of God, especially the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Sometimes we feel weak. Sometimes we are at a, at a loss. When we are in the midst of trials, but friends, the, the Bible provides us this assurance. We can prevent sin. We can avoid, oh Lord, from violating God's commandments. Number five. The word of God has power also to sanctify. What do you mean by sanctify? It means what? To make pure, to make holy, or to set apart. God's word is able to to sanctify, to build us up into what God wants us to be, to live a pure and holy life, a sanctified life. And it is through the scriptures that we will grow, friends. We can become strong, loyal, and steadfast members of his church. John 17, 17, also another verse tells us, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Where else can we go? The, we will, the truth is where we can go. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 17, it says, in my clear word Bible, it says, that those who serve God may become mature. Another version says perfect. Become mature. That those who serve God, that's you and me, that those who serve God may become mature. Be thoroughly equipped to live lives full of love and good works. Friends. Can the word of God do that? Oh yes. Many of us today are serving, many of us are engaged, many of us are involved, many of us are practicing, what do you call this one? T, what? Total involvement, all right? Total member involvement, TMI, all right? That's a program that our worldwide church is encouraging all our churches, all our members to be involved in helping hasten the coming of Jesus. Total member involvement. It has power to make, what? to make us strong, live a pure and holy life that will lead us what? to live a life full of love and good works. 
Number six, the Word of God also has power to bring healing in health. Oh, this is something that uh, our elderly and our sick friends would love to hear. The Word of God has power to bring healing and health. Proverbs, we have two verses there, Proverbs 4, 20 to 22. It says, Attend to my words, they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Psalm 107, verse 20 also. He sent his word and healed them. Life and health to all those that keep them in their hearts. So what's the secret of longevity? of good health, keep God's words, keep God's words. In fact, the Bible says somewhere, I found the word of God and I ate them <laughs> and tasted like honey. Yeah. It's like one of the verses there. No? All right. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. You remember the story of the Roman centurion? Yeah? Do you? He asked the Lord to heal his servant. He was a good master. While he, he was a, a heathen uh, commander of the Roman army, but he has heard about the ministry of Jesus in that part uh, of the country. And he requested the Lord to heal his servant. Yet in spite of the, his position, he was hesitant to, learn, to let the Lord come into his house. And so what did he say? He said, Lord, just say the word. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. What faith, what an assurance of what the power of God can do. It can heal us. Maybe physically, emotionally, mentally, friends. I wish, you know, I am not that forgetful. I would like to claim that promise <laughs> that I would, but I would receive health and healing. I'll, I'll be 72 this year, I hope, and I pray that the Lord will extend my years. <laughs> But who knows? No. We can only trust his word. No. We can only trust his word. And know that he knows what is best for us, right? He knows what is best for us. But what an assurance from the word of God. He will bring healing in health to those who keep his words in their hearts. We'll go to number seven. The word of God has power to nurture patience and joy and sustain our hope. Again, a beautiful assurance from the Word of God. Power to nurture our patience. We need patience because some of us might give up. People have been telling us Jesus is coming. I remember I was, I think, what? I was first year high school. <laughs> and uh, I developed that sense uh, you know, I would enjoy life. And so I told my mother one, time, one day, said, I don't like to go to school anymore. I said, why? Oh, you've been telling me Jesus is coming soon. I was first year high school, I believe. Jesus is coming soon. What for? All right. But Lord, we need patience. We need but to have that attitude of being able to, to, uh, to endure. As the Bible has promised, those what, who, what, who will endure unto the end will what? Will be Save, brothers and sisters. So don't allow anything to hinder us 
from serving the Lord. Yes. Not even a loved one, not even a family member, not even our spouse or anyone close or very dear to us. No. He who endures unto the end shall be saved. We need patience. All right. But at the same time, the Lord also promises what? Our patience will be what? It will be what? Rewarded with joy. Rewarded with joy. All right. That my joy what? may be what? Might remain in you. That is the, the, the wish. The Lord's wish for us. That His joy might remain in us. And that our joy, not only what? Half or one third, but this, our joy may be what? May be full. Our joy may be full. Are we joyful Adventists? <laughs> Let's ask ourselves, you know. Some of us sometimes when we go out after church service, nakasimangot pa rin. I don't know if it was a joy being here in worship. Kasimangot pa rin. Kinukumusta mo na puro. Ginisnab ka pa. My friends, are we what? Joyful Seventh-day Adventist Christians. Can people see in us the joy of the Lord? You know? When they talk to us, when they meet or encounter us in life, look, promise the promise, there will, what? there will be joy. And then finally, it says there, it will what? It will sustain our hope. It will sustain our hope. Right. That's why we love to sing this song every time we are about to dismiss from church. See? I like these two lines, sister. We have what? This hope right, that burns within our hearts. And we have what? We have this faith. Faith what? In the promise of His Word. Friends. Hope, faith, patience, joy. Oh, I would rather serve God and Mammon after you have studied today. I would rather serve God, not Mammon, not money, not the material things of this world, friends. Number eight. The Word of God has power to give wisdom, guidance, and direction in our lives, friends. You have your own experiences. Encounter with the Lord. 2 Timothy 3.15 also tells us what, that the Holy Scriptures is able to make us what, wise unto salvation able to make us wise unto salvation. And verse 16 follows that up, which is, Scripture is profitable, first, for teaching, second, for refuting error, and third, for correcting our wayward ways, and finally, for helping us to live righteously. Friends. So you need guidance? You need wisdom. You need direction. Consult right, the Word of God. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6 is one of, of our favorite verses. And Romans 8.28 also is another favorite. My wife and I would often quote these two verses. Especially Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Because it has become so significant and meaningful to me personally. April 1980 is a date that may, many Negrosanons will not forget. April 1980, I said, it's a date that many Negrosanons will never forget. Still ring, Paul? Or are you just as forgetful? <laughs> are you from Negros? Or maybe you're, if you're not from Negros. Or from Bokolod? What happened 
in April in 1980. Hmm? 30, how many years ago was that? <laughs> Been a long time since, right? But I believe you still remember the Don Juan tragedy. The Don Juan, the, sh the boat that sank in the waters uh, off Romblon in Mindoro. That is a very significant date for me because I was live. We were living in Manila then, at the time. And my mother and my older sister Veronica, we used to attend here, Jay, but she's on vacation right now. My mother and my, our older sister Veronica, they came to Manila to process their visa for the U.S. After the processing, they were in a hurry to go back to Iloilo because my sister is finishing his graduate studies at CPU at the time. So they said, get us, get us, uh, get us a place in the fastest boat that will bring us back to Iloilo. And at the time, the fastest boat flying Manila and Negros and Iloilo was the Don Juan. Right. But you know, the Lord is so good. The Lord is so good. We were, at the time, our house was located in Alabang. And that's quite a long drive from Alabang to the pier in Manila, North Harbor. I remember the request, get us the, the fastest boat to bring us back to Iloilo. But you know, as I was driving towards the pier, something was, something was, I got the impression that I should disobey. I don't want to, no, to follow. Oh yes, we'd like to let, get them back as, as fast as, as fast as possible. But then on my hesitation, in the impression that I get, at the time. By the time I arrived in Pier 2 of the North Harbor, the Don Juan has already left. So I was forced to get them the tickets with the Doña Florentina, the sister ship of Negros Navigation. Friends, as I look back, you know, to cut the story short, if not for faith in God's word, in his impression, in his guidance and direction, my mother and my sister would be among those who went down into the deep. Right. There were more than a thousand or so who lost their lives in that sad mishap, April of 1980, friends. You have your own experiences of how God directs our lives, I'm sure. If you're given the chance, you can have your testimonies here. All right. But this is my time, so I'll share it with you. Does God answer prayers immediately? How soon does God answer our prayers? <laughs> One incident, right? Because we are talking about here guidance and direction. One incident, one day, my wife and I we went to our hospital in Pasay, Manila Adventist Medical Center. That's also a long drive from Alabang. That's about hmm, 45 minutes at the time, not so traffic yet, maybe 45 minutes to an, one hour away, drive from our house in Alabang. So we, I think we, we went for consultation somehow there. Then we uh, reached until about noontime, about lunchtime. So we decided to take our lunch at the cafeteria. We were lining up. There was a long line of customers in the cafeteria. Then I took my wallet and, and took a look. I said, there was no money. I didn't have any money. And I asked my wife, do you have money? She said, no, I don't have money. What shall we do? We cannot get lunch here for free. 
we have been workers here before, but not anymore. <laughs> People don't know us anymore at this time. So what do we do? The Lord shall provide, but Philippians 4.19, my God, what I'll supply as what? All our what? All our needs. How soon? Instantly. Instantly. Because as we were lining up there, behind so, behind that so many people lining up, I don't know what happened, but there was a man right there near the cashier who turned back. And I was surprised to see someone who doesn't eat there. Because it's not that cafeteria is in a place where multi-millionaires eat. <laughs> I was surprised why he was there that day. And he turned back. And when he saw me, me and my wife, he waved. He waved. Mr. Tony Ko, the owner of Green Cross and Sun Rocks and all of these chemical, household chemicals and other stuff. He turned back and waved. And we didn't tell him we have no money. He said, Bayad na. Bayad na. Imagine, friends. Simple, right? But God but answers but prayers instantly. How do you like that? <laughs> All right. So let's go. Let's go to number nine. Number nine says, the word of God provides power for fruit bearing. For fruit bearing. Yes. Where can we find the assurance with the word of God. John 15, 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I remain in you, you, see, you will bear much fruit. Not only fruit, but much fruit. But then in verse 7, it also says, stay connected to Jesus. This is from the Clear Word Bible. Stay connected to Jesus and feed on his words and obey them and you will bear much fruit. Not only staying connected, sister, but feeding on his words will help us what? bear much fruit. Much fruit, friends. Romans 1, also verses 16 and 17, also reminds us that the word of God what? is the power of God unto salvation. First Thessalonians 2.13 also says, the word of God working in you, working inside us to change us so that we can what? We can bear much fruit. We can bear much fruit, brothers and sisters. Again, the assurance when Jesus just before he went back to heaven. He says, Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20. All power in heaven and in earth is given to me. And he assures us, go, tell others the goodness of salvation. Give Bible studies. Share the message. And lo, I am with you always. He will he'll be with us. He will be with us, friends and sisters. Friends, I hope that these nine points record in the Bible assuring us of God's power to help us live a, a true Christian life will be a blessing to us. But yet, I will say today, I'll, I'll be frank with us, with all of us. This is a reminder to all of us, to me, to all of us here. It's amazing that how many of us hmm, have access to this awesome power promised in God's word. But what, sister? We fail to take advantage. We fail to use it. As I said earlier, to tap into supernatural power. But we would rather what? 
to the, spend more time with our Facebook, mm, with our Twitter, with our cell phones, mm, and other worldly pursuits. Mm, that what, say there, we fail mm, to receive the blessings from a study, a diligent study of God's Word. I'm guilty of this sometimes. So many meetings, you know, so many board meetings, school board, church board, and other meetings here you know, that take our time. So many household chores. Kadamo asang dilinluan, kadamo asang lalabhan, you know. And by the time what we are done, we're so tired. We're so tired. We just want to sleep. We just want what, to take our rest. I'm, I'm guilty of this too sometimes, friends. But yet, friends, let us not, but let us not allow ourselves to neglect to study God's Word. Do not wait for a crisis to come. Then we rush and read our Bibles. God is not impressed by how much knowledge we have. God is not influenced by how many possessions we own. He is not moved by our long list of accomplishments, no. Neither is God swayed by the titles or positions we hold. God is simply moved by our, what? By our faith in Him. God is simply moved by our faith in Him. Trust Him. Trust His Word. Let's go to the Word of God in faith. Because as the Bible tells us, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. And it will takes faith to believe God's Word. It takes faith to rest on His promises. So my call for us today is this. Let us meditate on God's word. Let's make it a part of our lives. Let's share it, teach it. In 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself what? approved unto God. A workman that what? needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly, what is dividing? What's another word for dividing? Hmm? Rightly dividing, correctly presenting the truth, God's word, the truth. All right, friends. Study so that we will be in a position to share God's word correctly. Correctly. As children of God, and disciples of Christ, friends, we are responsible. We are responsible not only as hearers, but what? doers of God's word. Many of us probably read through the, our Bibles, but nothing happens right, after that. But our counsel, the counsel for us to should let us not only be hearers, but Doers, but doers of the word. And this takes what? This takes daily feeding on God's word because it is the primary means by which God is nourishing our what? Our souls. Nourishment, spiritual nourishment from God's word. Let us give more time. Let, let, me, let me quote something from the spirit of prophecy to end our study this morning. Let us give more time to the study of the Bible. We do not understand the word as we should, sister. When we as a people understand what this book means to us, there will be seen among us what? A great revival. Revival, going back into the Word of God, feasting on His Word, 
and allow its power to transform our lives, friends. Testimonies to Ministers, page 113. At this point, may I entreat you to please pray. I, I think that's been announced earlier this morning. We will have what? February 12, 15 to 20, we will have what? Hmm? Did you hear the announcement? Right. We will have what? a revival meeting series here, right here in this church. And we have invited Elder Dwayne Lemon from the U.S. to lead us. He is a, a much sought after speaker for revival uh, meetings. Let's take advantage, friends. Bring your family, bring your friends. February 15 to 20. Let us not wait, friends, for the whole church to be revived. Sometimes some of us are waiting, looking at others, watching others. Let us not wait. See, for the whole church to be revived before we personally seek what God has for us in His Word. Total church revival, it will never happen, friends. It will never happen. If we are hoping to see the whole church revived, it will never happen, friends. That time will never come, says Mrs. White. That time will never come. But thank God, let us thank the Lord that we have an opportunity individually, personally, each one of us experience genuine revival. Even if others do not care. Personally, I say we need to be prepared for the final harvest in the last days. Time and again, our attention has been called. Let us prepare for the last days. Because, as we, again, the spirit of prophecies in the great controversy, page 625, only those, only those what, who have been diligent students of the scriptures and who have received the love of the truth will be shielded from the powerful delusion that takes the world captive. If we are not well grounded in scripture, friends, many of us will be deceived. Many of us will believe the false teachers, the false Christ that are coming up. So the great controversy says, Father says, so closely will the counterfeit resemble the true that it will be impossible to distinguish between them. What is them? Hmm. The true hmm, and what? And the fake. It will be impossible to distinguish between them except what? By the Holy Scriptures, friends. By the Holy Scriptures. That's why this is again, you know, to me, a very, very timely call. And we are glad that our church has adopted this theme Worldwide, for, for all of us, for all our churches. Faithfulness to His Word, friends. We need that now, we need that every day, and we need that to prepare for the last days, friends. I am not really a pastor. I'm not used uh, to calling for commitment. But today, I would like to, to make this request. How many of you would like to join me here in front? You can stand if you wish to as we commit together as a church, a church family, that we will spend more time not only reading but diligently studying the Bible and obeying what the Word of God tells us to do. How many would you, would you like to stand? Let us make that commitment, friends. We are living in crisis times. We cannot afford, we cannot afford to lose heaven. We want to see all of us up there with our loved ones, with all our friends, 
with our family members, friends. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we have heard your voice speaking to us today. And we feel also the influence of the Holy Spirit, Lord. And thank you for the gift of faith. Thank you for your promise of the power found in your word, o Lord, that you will give us patience, hope, encouragement, and joy, o Lord, as we wait for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. O Lord, help us, Lord, I pray, that we will not allow anything our schedules, our business, our businesses, all, oh Lord, the things that can steal our time for serious Bible study, Lord. Father, we commit ourselves to you today. Give us that strength. Give us that determination, O oh Lord, to spend time with you, learning from you, Father so that we may be able to stand in the last days. Lord, we don't want anyone here to be left behind. We want everyone, Lord, to be present with all the redeemed, singing the song of Moses and in the land, Lord. Praising you and thanking you for your salvation, for doing everything to save us, Lord, in spite of the fact that that we, are, we do not deserve, O oh Lord, the love and your grace that you have bestowed upon us so richly. So Lord, I pray now, bless us, Father. Empower us and help us, O oh Lord, to continue praying and to continue studying your word because it gives us power to live our lives, not only our lives, but a righteous life. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.